Hi folks, welcome to the channel. Welcome if you're new or welcome if you're coming back. My name is Crystal and I am the nurse in the north. This video today we're going to be unboxing Vancouver's subscription box. I'm really excited for this box because it is literally the largest physical box I have ever received and I think that means there's going to be some pretty good stuff in it. Or at least I hope so. <laughs> or at least or I, at hope, least I so. hope so. <laughs> or at least I hope so. Hey guys, editing Crystal. Not a good sign, but I'm coming in with a very early edit to give you the heads up that the tone of this video changes quite rapidly. It starts from one of excitement and happiness and really kind of goes from confusion to shock to disappointment. I've never had an unboxing experience like this, so if you're confused, if you're not sure what's happening, I'm so sorry. Honestly, this box was a surprise to me. I had no idea what was in it. I hope that you can hang in with me as I go through this unboxing because it honestly was, it was something else. Like I mentioned, this box is enormous. Here it is. It is quite wide girthy some would even say and enlarged from a front standpoint let me see if i can get out of another subscription box that i can show you what it's like inside i don't know if i can get both of these in the shot really well but this box on top here is the gift refinery box from spring and then below it is the vancouver city box yeah can you can you tell there it's almost like twice the size, like it's a massive box. And it's even just as wide as the gift refinery box. So it's a substantially large box. <laughs> this is called the city box. And I am deeming it Vancouver's box because the city that this box is referencing is supposed to be Vancouver, Van City, whatever you like to call it. This box is produced by the Daily High, which is a media conglomerate or online media group. I believe this is the only box for cities that exist, even though the Daily Hive covers like Toronto pretty intensively, this box will be a prototype of future subscription boxes to come. Nonetheless, it is just centered around Van City for this point in time. This box is for the summer 2021. However, there was a winter 2020 box that preceded this one. It was very successful apparently, so it hence precipitated the creation of this second box. And I can see why the winter 2020 box was so successful. It had in it like really big, impressive items. For example, it had a hotel stay, it had a Harshal backpack, it had an aromatherapy diffuser, so substantial items from Canadian and specifically Vancouver companies. Really, the essence of the box is to feature Vancouver makers, creators, and services. To be honest, when I bought this, I didn't actually realize the services experience items were included in it. Like, I'm not going to Vancouver. I don't plan to go to Vancouver anytime too soon. For them to include a lot of things that require you to be in the city to use, is really great for subscribers who are local, but for people out of the province or even out of the country ordering this box, I'm just kind of concerned it might not play into the overall cost or value. Like I guess when I initially read up about the box and I found this box through Instagram, surprise, surprise, they had kind of said, this box is your flight free trip to Vancouver. But you know, that being said, if a lot of the value of the box comes from things you need to be in Vancouver to use, not necessarily truly flight free, shipped to Canada and the USA too. So I definitely don't think I'm like the only one outside of Vancouver ordering it. It's a limited edition box. There was only so many you could get. The way that they ran getting this box as well was a little bit unusual in my opinion. You essentially had to wait till the company opened the boxes. Then you had to message them and they would send you a link if you were like chosen. I'm not quite sure how they chose you or if they just sent everybody the link, but you had to like physically reach out to them to get the link to get the box. I don't know, going forward, it just seems to me it'd be a lot easier if they just put a link on their website and let people order directly themselves, but I guess they have the staff and the manpower to individually send out links. Cost-wise, this box was $160 with tax on top of it to get to my door it cost 180 80. so 181 dollars basically there was free shipping in canada so that was a bonus i'm excited to open this one see what i got and at least put it on the map put it out there so you're aware that this box is being created if you're someone who loves vancouver or you're someone that lives in vancouver you know maybe future versions of this box if they come out would be of interest to you i've mentioned this before on the channel because i do tend to get a lot of these like local boxes 
boxes and, and showcase them. I do think that any box that promises to showcase the spirit, diversity of a location and kind of make people fall in love with the place they live is such a wonderful thing. For somewhere like Vancouver, I don't think a box like this would have been actually too big of a financial risk because, you know, I think it's pretty well known in Canada, people who live in Vancouver love that city. They love living there. It's not cheap to live there, but they choose to because it's beautiful. It's got wonderful amenities. It's super close to nature, is diverse in many ways. I think this box is truly a home run and super overdue as far as the subscription box community goes, because I'm sure tons of people in Vancouver would endorse and love this box. I guess I should also mention like a lot of the boxes we've received in the past have BC companies in them. So, I mean, I don't really know like what the makeup of small businesses is across Canada, but I think as far as successful small or Canadian businesses go, British Columbia is a mecca. Like, let's be honest, there's some wonderful, wonderful companies and brands out there. There is supposed to be, for one lucky person who gets this box, a special Vancouver City pass that's coming out. I'm not exactly sure what that includes, what that entails, but they do have kind of like similar like the Jolly box, like one lucky person will get this item hidden in their box. Knowing that I paid 180 for the box, there's supposed to be a $450 retail value. Arguably, if the experience items aren't much of the box. I still could get my money I paid out of the box very reasonably, so I'm hoping that's true. I guess too, like because traveling is opening up again, this box might be a really nice gift to someone who is going out west or planning like their first post-COVID trip out west. So keeping an eye on the experiences, we'll see if there's like dates that they phase out or that they expire by just to just to keep an eye on like what the feasibility of that would be. I guess likewise too, the Daily Hive is really predisposed to creating a subscription box because they are aimed at millennials who are in love with their city, the next generation really in love with their urban surroundings. Like the mantra of the Daily Hive, I think really aligns really well with this box in many ways. I don't think that the box is like out of left field that the Daily Hive is producing it. Like I think it's on brand. I think it's on brand for Vancouver. I think it's on brand for the Daily Hive. I think I'm really looking forward to this box and I have high hopes for it, especially with the price tag. I really heard a lot of consumer feedback so far on this one as much as the winter. I received this box, I ordered it at the end of June and it came like the second week of July to me. So I have had it for a few weeks. I did see only one review for it online. It was on the Daily Hive website actually and it wasn't even on the, the subscription box or the city box website. It was just like under an article and someone had wrote, I subscribe to this box. It was allegedly $450 retail value and I feel like I got nothing in it. It was a really disappointment disheartening, but you know, who knows? Let's see what's in it. Let's make a call for ourselves and see if this exceptionally large subscription box lives up to its hype. Before officially opening the box, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the art on the outside of this box. I think it is stunning. I think the illustration, the animation are really subtle and cute hints to living in Vancouver and really hit on that nature aspect of living in Vancouver. You have below like pictures of whales, pictures of people going to like the farmer's market. We have lighthouses and references to camping. So I think all of these things are really reflective of the lifestyle that comes with living in Vancouver and it's done in a really cute and creative way. Also on the outside flap of the box, it says Escape the Ordinary. I think that's really cute. And I think this box is super reusable. I'll be interested to see if it's a reversible, which would be a bonus. Opening up the box. Ooh, got some clanging happening in this box. First impressions when I opened the box, beautiful yellow color with kind of like the speckled design. And then in the lid of the box, it says from your city to you, which arguably, you know, if you're not of Vancouver, it could be from our city to you, but whatever. Semantics. Looking at it at first glance, it is a very much a reversible box. I'm going to be able to reuse this 100%. Now the contents of the box are a little bit of a different story. Just to give you a sneak peek, you can tell things could have used from a little bit of packing expertise, I think. I think this tissue paper that was supposed to conceal the items and make it look like a little cohesive has become ripped. Things have kind of been tossed around from the shipping process. Yeah, I guess just when it's like a hundred and fifty plus dollar box, you really want to open it and get like the vibe that it's like luxury, it's high end, it, it's worth that. So 
anyway, that's just my, my point of view. The item that I believe has our spoilers in it is in this little envelope style. We can open it and make sure that's what it is. Actually, maybe that's not what it is. It feels like there's an item in here. I don't really see anything else that could be an explanation of what's in the box. So let's open it. It's on the very top. It looks like any way it was supposed to be on the very top and see what's inside of it. All right, so, so this, actually this little packet just has a bunch of cards in it. And I'm assuming these represent all the brands that are in this. Okay, huh. It's just a lot of, of cards. So we will go through these at the end of the video, I guess. The other thing that's in this little uh, envelope, I guess, is this very teensy tiny glow skin elixir. It's, it's, it's minuscule. I'm assuming this is a sample. The tiniest little skincare product I have ever, I have ever seen. The eyedropper and it's this blue color. I mean, it's very cute mini sample be worth like it's weight in gold for them to have sending a sample out the size be worthwhile <laughs> put that to the side all right so i guess just going off the top because things are just kind of chucked in here <laughs> i'm gonna go to the brands that i recognize first in this box and i guess we'll go out from there and see if we discover any new ones first thing i noticed on here and i feel like i have actually received this exact product before is from laid back snacks they are maple praline almond. I think I got these before my Simply Beautiful box, so they are definitely a British Columbian company. And I remember having these, they were delicious. They were absolutely fantastic. So I can see why they included them in today's box. Like these were so yummy when I had them before. In the bottom of the packaging, 80% fuel, 20% fun, which is probably actually a good way to put it because you know, the almonds are essentially good for you. The outside toppings, maybe not so much, but I mean, I'm not here to judge. I had a Snickers bar for breakfast. Cool, definitely will get used out of these. Interestingly enough, I thought I'd just mentioned these expire pretty rapidly, November 16th, 2021. Wouldn't have thought an almond product, I need to hurry up and eat, but these would be good to take along with me on a little road trip maybe this summer. The next brand that I recognize in here, Herbaland Gummies. And we received Herbaland Gummies, or I should say I. I received some in the Jilly Box from the spring 2021. They were beauty collagen gummies. Definitely, again, another Canadian brand. These gummies are actually interesting because like the Jilly Box, they are a collaboration item. So it says right on them, City Box Vancouver Gummies. So these are supposed to be for immunity, for adults specifically. Echinacea and elderberry, and they are like, I can open them up so you can see better, but they are actually shaped like a little berry. Mmm, they smell delicious opening them up. Oh my goodness, you're supposed to take three gummies a day according to this. Yeah, definitely not going to be doing that, but it has vitamin D, zinc, and vitamin C's. I guess that's where the immunity comes from. Let's open them up here so you can see. So they are like a little berry shape. I'll give it a try. I haven't taken any of my vitamins today, so this is probably fine. Ooh, ooh, those are sour. <laughs> sweet after, sweet now. It's sour though at first. These are vegan, non-GMO, so fantastic if that is you. A nice thing about these ones compared to the Jilly Box ones, I found the Jilly Box ones had a quite an aftertaste to them. These, I don't notice any aftertaste. That's one thing I would say that kind of negative against the Herbaland gummies is I find it really hard do you find the calories in these items? I guess maybe I could look on their website. If I find it, I'll put it below. But overall though, like the taste of these, if you do like that sour berry taste, you will love these. So I think that's all the items from brands that I recognize. Let's hop into the box on the next couple items that I see. First thing that stands out as one of the bigger items that I'll point out is this water bottle. First glance, Oh, it is. it does look like it is a metal bottle when you open the top of it. First glance, this seems a little bit cheap. This doesn't seem like it's from any specific brand. It just says, Escape the Ordinary. So I'm imagining, because that was on the outside of the box, this is actually produced by the Daily Hive City Box team. This isn't anything too special, I would say, and nothing about it to me specifically screams Vancouver, but it's something they included. Next item that screams out to me is this steeped 
coffee. So this is from the Beachcomb Coffee Co. And it looks like this is a take on like what Emory Chamberlain sells, from my understanding. It sells a steeped coffee product. It comes in like a tea bag and you, you dunk it in hot water and you have coffee versus tea, which is cool and trendy. And I'm actually excited to try this because I've heard people speak about the Emory Chamberlain one. So it's cool to know there's a Canadian version. It looks like it's just the one bag. Oh yes, it does say that. Beachcomber Coffee Co one bag so not a whole lot this kind of rings very sampley to me this item to be honest especially like with a 450 dollars value like i wonder what a package of this coffee would cost because really you just get the one cup you know like if you have a partner even you both can't try the coffee i mean this is me just noticing i guess and maybe this isn't important to anybody but the due date of this item actually is coming up as well it uh, expires in september so definitely i guess need to use this it's definitely a cool item i definitely think it's a really neat summer item because you could easily take this camping it would be sweet to have actually a few of these so you don't have to haul a coffee maker with you but yeah just the one little bit disappointing in my opinion i do not know why i try and film youtube videos with my hair down because it just progressively falls in my face as the video goes on so one second a brief intermission. There we go, much better. Just so you're not annoyed watching me flail with my hair the whole video because I have done that before for sure. All right, looking into the box, there is two beverage items, it looks like. These here are both sparkling water beverages. This one here is from Last Call and it looks like it's infused with cranberries and it is a sparkling water product, I'm pretty sure. This one does claim to have nutrients infused into it to make it more of like a health beverage. 15 calories in it. Oh, okay, vitamin C, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, vitamin B, B12, B6, pentothenic acid, and magnesium. A vegan product and yeah. I've never heard of this brand before, last call. Very interesting. The packaging of it also, I guess, is noteworthy. It's like some type of diamond Rubik's cube. Just like the makeup of it is very unique because I don't know if you can tell, but like you have to add these flavoring nutrients from the top in. Do you see that? They're kind of like its own little package. Never seen any product like this before. I mean, I have to be honest, I'm not a huge health beverage person, but it is very fascinating. I guess I like the portability of this in the sense that you can take it somewhere with you for the summer. Again, kind of touching into this idea of getting out into nature. But again, just the one item included. I'd be interested to know like what these kind of cost to you know substantiate just the one item being put in. The other item that we have is a caffeinated sparkling water beverage. So the one kind of, you know, this last call products, like we're health, we're nutrients. And this one's like, we're here to give you energy. We're here to get you going. I've never had a caffeinated sparkling water product. This one is zero calories, as you can see, and it is provided from wake water. 85 milligrams of caffeine, it says on the side, provided by a green tea base. So I wonder if that impacts the flavor of it. This again would be a good item to take with you if you do normally have that afternoon coffee, but you're outside, you're enjoying the activities, doing your thing. I think it's nice to get introduced to new brands. I think that's a big part of this box is we get to know Canadian brands that we haven't before. And I do appreciate that these are actually kind of like inventive items to include. So I like that for sure. Getting through this box. <laughs> do, there's one more snack item and then a bunch of beauty items. So we'll do the snack item. Another item from Herbaland Gummies. It's an electrolyte gummy, which I think is a good summer product because people are out sweating. Having some type of electrolyte replacement is a nice idea. All the other little gummies in here, it's 90 calories. It does say consume with water for best results. So it kind of like makes Gatorade in your tummy, I guess. Peak product for sure. Haven't seen anything like this. It says the flavor of it is like a tropical fruit flavor. I really do yoga, so maybe I'll pop one of these this week when I'm doing my yoga and, and see if it kind of gives me that boost of electrolytes that I would try and get from another source. As promised, lots of beauty items in here, or there's several beauty items in here, which I'm imagining the value of the box comes from these items. 
I would think. Usually beauty is a little more pricey. The very first item I guess I'll chat about is the hand sanitizer from Nelly's. This is a good size hand sanitizer, 100 mils. It looks like it's in a glass bottle and then it has like a screw top pump. I'm um, just in case you're wondering, this is a benzocalamine chloride based hand sanitizer. It's alcohol free and it has eucalyptus in it for emollients. You're like me, you know, you've gotten so into hand sanitizer from the pandemic because we've tried so many types, we've gone through so many types. Spraying it on, oh, you can smell that eucalyptus. Like it is a very strong eucalyptus smell. I actually don't mind this one. It, it is not tacky, like some of the ones. It doesn't feel like it's hanging out on your skin, but it definitely takes a lot longer to dry than an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. And the smell is pretty much completely evaporated after that initial spray. So if you like something that's like scentless long-term, this would be a good option. It is a very timely item as well. I know I mentioned this in lots of my past videos, but it is nice to have items to recognize that we are in a pandemic and we do need to continue to look after ourselves, whether that's washing our hands regularly, giving our house a good sanitize and wearing masks when we're out in places that we need to. Next item that I see on top is from Fern and Petal. And Fern and Petal were actually featured in the winter 2020 box. They provided some essential oils and the diffuser that was in that box is a buzz off. So I'm assuming it's like an all natural bug spray. My last year's gift refinery box, I received an all natural spray that had eucalyptus in it. And I actually didn't find it work too bad. Definitely if you're just out in a wooded area and you just want a little protection, it's not a bad idea. Grapefruit in it, citronella, lemon, eucalyptus, peppermint, cedar wood, and fractionated coconut. We'll give it a little spray, a little scent smell. Oh yeah, very strong citronella smell. Just a little a little coverage to get you through a low bug area. This is an 80 ml bottle, very cute packaging, very simplistic packaging that matches other fern and petal items that I've seen in the past. I think I follow these guys on Instagram. I don't find them like too crazy of an essential oil company in the sense that like they're not pushing like, you know, eating essential oils and and putting them on your sick child instead of taking them to the hospital. So I like that about them. If you have an allergy to aromatherapy or essential oils and you're looking for something that's done in Canada, they definitely are a good option, I think, for the most part. I don't find them super problematic, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Also, I've seen a lot of moms kind of get these products for their kids because they don't, you know, always want to put a full-on bug spray on their child. Maybe this is a good option for parents too. The item in here is from a brand I've never heard of, SCOA. This is a midi size toner. It's supposed to be a hydrating toner. 60 mils. Not a super big item. I mean, most of the toners I use are actually quite come in larger packaging, but see if it has any type of scent to it. It just smells very um, artificial, if that makes sense. Any issues with scent that th this would probably not be a good option for you, but it just smells like a very kind of like artificial drugstore toner, unfortunately, but a toner still nonetheless. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I thought this was a beauty product, this next item, but it doesn't look like it. It looks like it is food for you to eat. <laughs> Packaging, I was like, this must be a mask. No. So this is from Out of the Ordinary. It is a cocoa coconut oatmeal. It is vegan, high fiber. It looks like you just mix it with hot water and you can eat it instantly or you can do an overnight oats type of deal. There's a the packaging for it, very cute. Again, one person serving, one person size, like everything else in here. And it looks like this is made in Coquitlam, like it's actually assembled in Coquitlam itself, which is nice to see that it's actually made there. I'm sure they hire workers and local people to actually put this item together, which is nice to see for sure. Okay, so there's two items left in the box. These are kind of the bigger items that were left. So the first is this Tofino towel, which can it be a subscription box from British Columbia? if there's no Tofino towel in it, really. I mean, come on. This brand, if you don't know it, it's totally fine. I just, I feel like Tofino towel has become so iconic lately, whether it's in stores or subscription boxes, it really has become this kind of Canadian household name in many ways. They have hand lubed fair trade beach towels. Tofino itself is not in, in Vancouver, just so you know, it's on Vancouver Island. And I believe that is where this company is based out of, but I guess they decided to include it because the name very synonymous with British Columbia. So just take out the packaging so you can take a look at it. They do have paper packaging around the outside, which is great for the environment. And then the towel is this beautiful yellow. Yes, just this very thin cotton, very much like a Turkish towel. And it actually does say that these are 
handmade in Turkey and then imported into Canada. Maybe the designs are crafted out and asked for specifically from Tofino Towel. It is soft, it's nice. I do like the yellow design and I do think it's cute that it matches the box. Decent sized towel for sure. Like you saw it wrapped up there. It looks maybe super small, but definitely one person could use this at the beach comfortably. And I imagine this item is actually one of the big costs in this box. I believe Tofino towels are close to the $100 range. So we'll look it up, but that's what I'm imagining a big chunk of the retail value for this box came from. All right, and then this is the very last item, another towel. So we've got two towels in this box. This one is a lot less nice feeling than the Tofino towel, if I'm being completely honest. And this is just a very traditional beach towel. I'm gonna see what the logo is on it because I can't find it. Huh, <laughs> this towel is just an ad for Evo Car Share. <laughs> Look at it, Evo Car Share. Okay, can you see this? It's literally just a brand for Evo Car Share, this towel. What is happening? <laughs> okay, well, there is, there's that. There's that included with it. Oh my God, this is just literally a, an ad for a car share company. That would be like, I don't know, including a box for California with like a Lyft or Uber towel. That is, that's random. That's, that's really random right there. In total, it looks like we have about 14 products that came in this box, including this wee wee little, arguably sample skin product. Well, it's including all of them that seem like samples, to be honest. But yeah, 14 items in total. You know, just looking off the top and kind of giving an opinion, I think my favorite items for sure would be the Herbaland gummies. I do like taking gummies. I think these taste good and I think they match the box, which is really cute. Looks like time and effort has been put into creating these. I like the idea of the beverages items because summer we want to try different unique beverages and we're outside looking for something cool and obviously the tofino towel is a huge winner for me items that i absolutely hate and think are dumb <laughs> and i usually don't say that but honestly guys this bottle and this towel this evo share towel but the f i know that's not constructive criticism whatsoever at all but poorly made not really tied to Vancouver, just an ad kind of like, this is clearly an ad for the box. Evo Share Towels, clearly a Evo Share ad, like just kind of doesn't scream $180 price range to me, luxury or super well done, like yikes. Also like, why are there two towels in the box? Like clearly this one's gorgeous. Don't need to include another one, especially one of like, really, really poor quality. Clearly, I am a little bit divided on the items that are in this box. Let's look at what came in this envelope again quickly, just to kind of see if there's some explanation or further information about the things that are in here. There is no prices, it looks like, on any of these items, but I'm just gonna run through if there's a comment to be made about the items that came in the box. And then it looks like some of these are also like coupons for experiences, so if, that is like kind of a value to the box. I'll go through it quickly as well. First thing, the Glow Skin Care, this little sample size that we received, and I think I now can confirm it's sample because it says to use five drops a day of this item on your skin. Well, if I used five drops a day, I think I would only get like, I don't know, maybe a week's worth of use out of this item. I think this is a really cool item. I think a full sized and $180 box would have been more appropriate. A sample in a $30 box, okay. Sample in a two, almost $200 box, not okay. The Skoa skin toner that came in here, they sent a card that if you spend another $100, you can get a free larger size of this. So I guess that'd be good if this is a brand you like and love and you wanna spend money with, but to me, this is very addy, this little item combo here. It just, yeah, it doesn't scream again. $180 value box to me. This is interesting. This is from Drinking Dog & Co, a soy candle company. This is a coupon for a free candle on their website. And I guess I just wonder why this candle, and there was definitely room, but why this candle wasn't included in the box. 
because if you're offering a free candle, just give us, just give us the candle. Maybe I will go on and try and see if I can get this candle to try and get some of the value out of this box. So this is supposed to be a $22 retail value and you're only allowed to choose eight ounce candles or less in there. Shipping not included. Let me go on and see what the cost is for that. But honestly, why they didn't just take the candles to the warehouse give them to the city box and pack them in the box. That's very odd. Hey guys, so I went online and took a look at the Drinking Dog & Co website. I looked out and picked out a candle that I liked. All of their candles are really kind of named after dogs and kind of correspond to a breed with a scent, super fun. However, when I went to check out, you will see that the shipping to get the candle to Ontario was almost the exact same amount as the candle itself, which is just insane to be honest. The other thing is the promo code I was given from the box doesn't even work anymore. So about a month after the box came out, they have discontinued this code already. To say the very least, this is disappointing and really surprising from this little brand that they kind of have gone this way. I mean, I didn't even buy an item from them and I have like a bad taste in my mouth about this brand. The other thing that really kind of miffs me about this company is they post on their Instagram page that they make all these wonderful custom candles for restaurants and events and etc. Like why did they not just make a custom city box candle and put it in the box? Like that would have been so cool and I would have loved that, but did not choose to do that. So I don't understand. <laughs> also like how much work would it be for a small business to individually send out like hundreds of candles from the subscription box it would have been so much work so something obviously happened there you know the city box side or the drinking dog and co side very strange situation this card here is from reckless which is offering a biking tour for i'm assuming one person it says two hours of biking $23 value. It's valid through to the end of December of 2021, so it does give you a little bit of time to use it if you don't have time to be in British Columbia right this minute. But it looks like it's just a bike ride for one, so if you were more than one person, you wouldn't be able to get to enjoy this item, I think, as much. Or you would still have to pay to have that other person go on the biking tour with you. If you were a single person and you live locally, the value for this definitely would be there. This is another experience coupon. This is from North Point Brewing. This is one flight of beer. And I don't know, it says one flight valid per person. Does that mean like if you bring five people, you can each get a free flight with this coupon? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm thinking it just means you get one, one free flight when you come. Again, definitely if you're out in British Columbia, Redeeming this probably would be worth the bang for your buck. A restaurant coupon, again, from Trolls. It looks like, it doesn't really say this, but it says a coupon all day breakfast. So I'm wondering if you get a free all day breakfast. Again, this one's good till December 31st, 2021. I'm imagining this whole box is kind of geared towards couponing one single person which might not be great for any household of more than one person. <laughs> Guess the good thing about both of these being positive, I mean, two small businesses stepped up and offered free items, which is fantastic. And if I was local, I'd be like, great, chance to explore two places for cheap. Uh, okay, keeping going with what's in this little packet here. A straight up advertisement for that pass that I was talking to you about. It just says, oh no, you did not win the free DH pass, but not to worry, you can get a deal from special partners as low as 99. Okay, well, I'm not doing that, clearly. <laughs> not to be harsh, but I guess it's good to know if you really want a DH pass, you can get it cheaper somewhere, but I don't think a lot of people who bought this box did it for the specific intention of winning that one DH pass. So this is kind of just an advertisement for the pass and nothing more. Cherry on top of this box is the Evo Share which I didn't do a good job of explaining it when I opened up the towel, but Evo Share is like, I think it's really popular in Vancouver. I'm not sure it's popular in other places in Canada, but essentially it's this idea that you have a car and you share it out to a variety of other people. I have no idea how that works for insurance, but it's supposed to be like an alternative to renting. For a city dweller, it could essentially even replace car use for you because the idea is you only use it when you need it, you know, if you're going on an out of town trip or you're moving something that day or you need to get a super big grocery order, you would get an Evo. That's what it is. I don't know all the details of it. Like I don't know who owns the cars, if it's Evo or like private citizens like Uber, but essentially you're supposed to sign up, you get a time slot, you take the car and you pay for it. 
and for this little coupon, which I guess is to compliment the lovely towel, you get a $20 drive time, which no idea how long that is, maybe an hour, and then uh, a free Evo membership. I know, I know it's really popular out there, and I'm sure it's probably obviously cost effective if a lot of people use it, but uh, honestly, again, an item for someone who lives in British Columbia would probably love this, but for me, it doesn't really have a value. I think it's funny too, like if you have an Evo membership, you get no additional cost or time off. Like they're just like 20 bucks off if you're a member or non-member. <laughs> like, okay, thank you. I guess maybe you could use your towel to like protect the back of the Evo when you're like putting your stuff in it and then you don't get have to worry about cleaning it after. Or <laughs> I don't know. Well, that is the box. Hey guys, editing crystals. I just want to give you the heads up for the rest of the video. I will be in and out with commentary and I've kind of structured the end of this unboxing very unlike other videos I've done. I have segmented the end of the video off into a various component, kind of like a video essay, just kind of explaining some of the major issues I have found with the box. You do get a mix of what I'm thinking kind of in the moment. And then I also kind of preface it with knowledge that I have gained recently from research I've done. I have researched really extensively this box. I just kind of went down a rabbit hole this past week with it because it was so frustrating to me for a whole multitude of reasons. Get into it. Retail value. Definitely my impressions from this box is that the cost and the value is not here. I really am disappointed in general that the city box didn't follow what is the norm for subscription boxes to include retail costs and really justify where that $450 promise is coming from. I am actually, I'm so certain that they didn't meet the $450 cost that I'm actually gonna take some time right now. I'm gonna research where everything came from and what the actual cost there is of everything included. And let's skip ahead to future me, who Who's gonna find out actually what the retail value of this box is and if the city box was just straight up lying to us. So I thought I would just jump in right away with the cost of the box items just so we can get that out in the open because I saw so many comments online with people saying, you know, I did, I didn't really add it up. I didn't research it, but I feel like this isn't that much money, et cetera, et cetera. I took the time, energy and researched what the list was. I would though like the record to also stand. I did reach out to the gang at City Box to find out what the list was, the retail list, because they had made comments on their Instagrams saying, you know, reach out if you're concerned about how much the cost was. And we'll get more into these reviews in the next section, but I just want you to let you know, people were concerned. They did offer to provide the city box cost list. It has not been provided to me. So I went ahead and assembled my own cost list through research of these products online and their various websites. So going in order of how we open the box, the very first item we're gonna start with is the Glow Elixir. I mean, we could get into the semantics of why we are hashing out the cost of this because it is a sample, but hey, humor me, everybody. Let's just pretend that there was a value assigned to this by the box. The original glow mixer is 30 mils and it cost $69 Canadian. I am gonna estimate that the little sample bottle I got had approximately five mils in it. There's just, there's lots of math here, unfortunately, but take it from me, if you divide 30 by six times, you get five mils. If you divide $69 by six times, you're gonna get $11.50. So glow and mixer, $11.50. Feel free to follow along at home here. Laid back maple praline almonds. I found them online for six dollars the exact same package the herbaland immunity gummies these are a little tricky i saw that there was 90 gummies listed for 20 dollars i counted out the gummies that came in our container there was 50 just for peace of mind sake let's say that this is valued at 20 dollars even though we received less the water bottle that was provided by the city box what i ended up doing was taking the label off of the bottom of the bottle and searching it into google again the math is a little bit convoluted here but i'm gonna basically just say based Based on what the baseline cost for the bottle was and what the cost of adding extra color and screen printing cost, I'm gonna say it costs the max $10 to produce this bottle and let's say $15 retail. So then they're making a $5 profit off of it. So $15 bottle. The Beach Comer Coffee, again, an item someone could argue is a sample. This was listed on the Beach Comer Coffee website for $2.50. The Last Call Vitamin Drink, 
thing is only you can buy in a four pack, which is almost $50. Four divided by $47.99 equals $12. The Wake Water Drink, again, available in a 12 pack, $25.19, dividing that by 12. We get a cost of $2.10 per Awake Water. The Electrolyte Herbaland Gummies, these are valued at a $3.50. The Nelly's Hand Sanitizer, we received the 100 mil container. I looked it up online. It actually is on sale in most places, but let's just say we paid full retail value for it. It is $8 Canadian. Burn and Petal Buzz Off Spray, it is listed on their company website as $16 Canadian. Oat of the Ordinary Cacao Oatmeal is listed for $4 and 50 cents. The Scoa tonic that we received, we received a midi size. You cannot buy that size online, which again reinforces to me that it probably was a sample we received. Only size you can get of the Scoa tonic is 240 mils, and that is at $28. I know 60 mils isn't exactly half of 240 mils, but let's just say that cost is half, so we would pay $14 for that product. Tofino towel. This item was a lot cheaper than I thought actually. And though I will say City Box kind of promoted this item as a custom made towel for the City Box, you can find a lemon or yellow colored towel in the exact same pattern that we received on the Tofino Towel website for $55. Just to wrap up all the Evo things into one cute bundle. So we received the Evo towel and the Evo membership slash car share amount. I am just gonna label that with a blanket price of $30. We received 20 to use for drive time. And then I'm just going to say the towel plus the membership. I couldn't find anything like that cost wise online. I'm just going to say those cost $10 to put in. And I think that's a very reasonable amount to say. From the Drinking Dog and Co, which we've already went over in depth, it was a $22 item. Uh, no one received it, but $22. Okay. The rest of the items which we received coupons for were the Reckless Bike Tour, $23.50. North Point Flight of Beer, which I looked up is $10. And the Trolls All Day Breakfast, which is valued at $15. And there is actually two options of all day breakfast you can get, so that is nice of them. In total, my add up is $270.60. I think I was more than generous on a few of these items for what they were actually worth. I wonder too if maybe like some tax was included, but really that shouldn't make up almost uh, another $200 worth of items in the box. I would also like to say of the $270 that I added up here, about 105 went to experiences coupons alone. So that's very interesting because I'm basically getting the money I put into the box. I'm actually getting less out of it because I paid 180 to get it to my door. I have about $170 worth of retail here. Quite a significant discrepancy in the money. And I honestly could probably do an entire video on why this is wrong and what's happening here. You know, I have had boxes in the past where maybe they've been off $20 here or there in retail. I think to be off $200 is a completely other issue and it's made an even bigger issue as we'll get into the next section about who's providing this box and where it's coming from. That at the very least, this was false advertising. Promise a $450 retail value and deliver 270. And again, I have derived costs off of things that are arguably free samples, been more than generous. I just I just don't know what to say. It's just, this is probably the worst part about this box, honestly, is, is this kind of blatant lie and slap in the face with the cost. Just watching people online like question it, but not really know has kind of been sad. So I hope people find this video and actually feel rest assured that yes, your instinct that you did not get $450 retail value was in fact correct. You did not in any way whatsoever get $450 worth out of the city box. I think the retail cost of this box is also really important when you consider how the subscription box industry works and how cost is derived, not only as a consumer, but for the businesses that have jumped in on this box. So one reason retail value can be really high for a subscription box, but the cost be low for those making it is through wholesale which seem to be available through the majority of the businesses that contributed to this box. So that's one way. Another way though, and I think the most problematic way is sometimes through advertising, companies will offer products very cheaply with the idea that they're going to reach more future consumers and future customers or repeat customers. And I think I've discussed this in past videos, but the fact that Daily Hive is a media conglomerate, you know, there's also the risk and ethical possibility of the Daily Hive exchanging goods in this box for advertising 
advertisement space with these businesses later. These things all kind of beg the question, did these businesses get ripped off? Did us as consumers get ripped off? I really don't know where my $180 went because from what I can see, no matter if it was from wholesale pricing or from advertisements or from just companies acting out of the goodness of their heart, my value really isn't here. My value really isn't here. And I'm imagining, you know, at this point in time, I fear the worst that the Daily Hive has pocketed a large sum of profits from this box in a way that they really shouldn't have. Critiques and reviews. Not gonna lie, the review I saw online that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, kind of ringing true for me right now. It is kind of like a big advertisement and a little bit of a scam in my opinion. To get my value out of this box, I definitely think I would need to live locally. Also, now that I've opened this box, I kind of look back at some of the advertisements that were done by some of the partnering and branding partners in this box, and I actually found it very deceptive. I actually saw this Glow sample, this Glow company kind of present their contribution to the box, and I assumed it was the whole vial, not this. The way they kind of talked about it in their Insta story it was like they had contributed their wonderful item. It's like, dude, you guys sent us a sample. Like, thank you so much, but no, like I won't be repurchasing that. And of course the glow shop was not the only business. I only mentioned them because I remember them off the top of my head. But when you look back at even the Sheraton, the wall center, they kind of advertise it as almost a one night stay. And I saw this come up in the comments a lot on Instagram as well. People really thought that a night hotel stay was included in the box. And it does really seem like that. And I wonder if some of this misleading comes from the city box itself. And the reason I say that is if you look at their website, it does kind of not clearly state what's in the box. It's just overall a very fuzzy picture. And I'm sure I do not blame the brands at all for that fuzzy picture. I really want to make it clear here that I'm pointing the finger at the Daily Hive. Another good example is when the box sneak peeks were coming out, the spoiler, the only spoiler shown from the city box people themselves was this Tofino towel. And lo and behold, what was the most expensive thing in the box? The Tofino towel. So to only show the same thing over and over again, it's like, ooh, this is a surprise. Like we've got this really great one thing in here. You're gonna be shocked. It was just like, wow, guys, you totally, totally misled us with that one. That was total switch and bait. <laughs> You know what's also really disappointing about this box? Vancouver is a wonderful city to live with so many good products, so many great companies, so many good ideas, so many wonderful things to do and just items being made and created and produced. This box was a complete disgrace to those companies and businesses. And again, to interrupt myself here, not bashing the small businesses or the little brands that are in this box. I am specifically bashing the city box itself. Even if you just look at the items inside, not, not what they are, because I think intrinsically the items are good, but even the choice to put these smaller sizes, these sampler sizes inside the box, very bizarre. I actually tried to like count up the total amount of full size items. And it is tricky because a lot of the items come in multiple sizes. But if I had to say what I items are full sized. I would say the two towels, one of them being absolute cruddy quality. I would say the nuts from laid back were a large snack size. I would say the fern and petal buzz off was an appropriate large size. It came in the only size that they offer anyway. The two water drinks, the two water, the wake water and the last call drink are the full size. If you look at some of the other products like the gummies and Nelly's hand sanitizer, yes, they were pretty good sizes, but the company does offer larger standard sizes. So very reductive to the products that were included when you include them only as a sample size or a small little packaging of them. I don't see a lot of the brainchild work that I perceive to be going on in Vancouver for businesses, creators, companies, and makers happening in this box. I don't know. I'm, I'm not trying to diss the brands that are in there. That's, that's not my intention at all. I think my criticism really falls to the Daily Hive. The Daily Hive took something, Vancouver City, that like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, is an easy win for subscription box. There's so many cool things to do there. I cheapened it by the, some of the stuff they put in it, if I'm just being honest. 
Maybe they had issues putting it together. Maybe something fell through for them. So to really dig into this idea of something going wrong with this box, I want to give you a little bit of information about the Daily Hive to start off with. The Daily Hive was originally called the Van City Buzz, and in 2016, it converted over into the now known Daily Hive. The Daily Hive itself in Canada, I couldn't find a net worth for it or anything like that, but I was able to find they had won several awards and been labeled as one of the fastest growing companies, and they reached current over 6 million readers with really a focus in Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver. I think it's not unreasonable to say that they are a large corporation, a successful corporation in their own right. And I'm sorry if this is going to come off as angry and mean because let's be honest, I have a year and a half of like COVID rage on my back, but I'm just going to be honest. For a large company to come in, take money from local businesses, which these were, kind of bolster this box on their name and brands that they've been building separately and independently and very probably very hard behind the scenes and just kind of throw them in this half-ass box, excuse my language, is ridiculous. I can't believe no one else is talking about this because I'm so upset. Like, I'm so upset about this box. I think what digs in the knife deeper in my case is the Daily Hive has two companies that are offshoots of it within Canada. These companies are unique but play a role within the larger facility. The first one I want to talk about is ID Agency. They are an agency that represents social media influencers. And to this date, they claim to have like almost a reach of a million people. This just makes me so mad because when this box was being launched, there was so many influencers pushing this box and a lot of them were showing like pictures of them with the box staying at the Sheridan which I think also misleads why there wasn't a Sheridan stay included and it really makes me wonder how many of these influencers were working for this ID agency the other thing when I look back at those videos of the influencers or what is available because it looks like a lot of them are not on those influencers sites anymore or on their social media anymore it doesn't seem that anyone knows what was in the box so they were like pushing a box that they didn't know what was in it. We all know influencer marketing is not the most ethical. We all know there's problems with it, but it is a very effective way to market. People have trust in their influencers. I'm just gonna let the names of these influencers hang out in this video and when I show the pictures and rolls of people showcasing off the boxes, because you know what? They have responsibility for pushing this box when they shouldn't have. Now, with their agency being tied to the box, is that an issue? It might have been. It might have been. They might have been contracted to do something that they probably didn't want to. But when I just look at what was kind of done here with the social media influencer group, it's disgusting. Influencers just blindly push pushing a subscription box onto consumers, onto people. You know, I saw some posts of people being like, this is the only box I could afford this year. And I got this one. Like, oh my God, what are you guys doing? People are not made of money. The other offshoot company is called Colony Digital, which I would argue anything named after colonialism, probably not an appropriate name in 2021 for your business, but just gonna throw that out there. The thing about Colony that I thought was really interesting is they are a PR company and they are really centered around marketing and strategy strategy. Their name is tagged in a lot of the city box Instagram photos and information. So I'm really thinking they had a heavy hand in this box. And beyond just not being qualified to maybe do the box, it appear to have any subscription box ties. I think it's really interesting is the artwork for this box was derived from an in-house illustrator. This in-house illustrator, though they live in Canada, they're originally from the UK. To me, that rings as like not a very local choice, I guess, for a brand to be like, we're so hyper local. We only care about the local. Like there's a million artists in Vancouver like Colony should have outsourced that to a local artist but that's just me I'm not saying the artwork that was done it was poor I think it was really cool I'm just throwing it out there that maybe if you're gonna be this hyper local brand you should be using a local artist the other thing though that's very troubling to me about Colony Digital is that has how they handled this entire thing they're supposed to be a PR company and I have to tell you the Instagram for City Box has been abandoned since June 14th there's people messaging saying they've not got any response on top of the lack of response, comments have been stopped and limited on posts. That posts have been deleted. They only confirmed deleting one post. It was related to the Evo brand, I'm imagining, because they got a mass flood of hate messages on it. I feel confident in saying that Instagram was just kind of abandoned because they never even did a full reveal of the box. They got like a couple products in and stopped everything. They just fell off the face of the earth, it looks like. The PR solution to this is quite simple and you just haven't, you just haven't done it. I feel like there was a few comments on 
on their page of people being reluctant to be too critical of this box because you know there it is derived in Canada it's from Canadian business and also it was only their second box and you know my response to that is one this is a massive company this isn't like a mom and pop or two sisters trying to make it work with their local subscription box don't don't feel bad for Diet Daily High for messing this up. Like, And then to back that up, the Canadian subscription box industry is small. Yes, there are some big name boxes here. And yes, there are a couple influencers who kind of dominate the space, like the subscription box girl or year of boxes. But you know, there's a lot of us little micro creators like myself who really enjoy opening these boxes, who spend our own money getting these boxes, who like to chat with other people in the community. There's those of you who watch this content and also buy boxes and lots of hard working subscription box companies that are also tiny and up and coming that really deserve a shot and really deserve us to buy their boxes and for Daily Hive to come in with their big $180 box and say hey look at me I deserve a slice of your business and then just take it and waste it it just it hurts the industry for everyone in Canada and for a box to just be so cruddy it sucks it really sucks the only thing that I'll really give the Daily Hive a break on was I saw their YouTube video of the initial box launch. I think they made it back in May, just showing some of the products that were in the box. Like I said, no official list to my recollection has ever been released, so I'm not even sure if I got everything that was supposed to be in the box. But what they did show in this video was a Herschel item. It was a fanny pack, and it made it seem like it was gonna be included in the box. It does make me wonder if Herschel fell through for them at the last minute and the item wasn't included as a result. I think something like that probably could have made up some value. I don't want to make it seem formulaic because subscription boxes I don't think are truly formulaic. There's a lot of different things that can come in them. But taking a page from the book of the Jilly box, that box, $200, it tends to always come with about three big items. This one only one. For them to lose out on one of those big items could have been could have been a make it or break it situation. Future solutions. Regardless of whatever the price tag is, I mean, obviously it's double let down if, if they didn't even get close to the retail value that they've promised. But in general, I would say my impressions from this box are, are not positive. I just kind of feel that these items are a little sampley. The way they were presented wasn't done in a way that's consistent with a box of this value. I think a really easy way to have made this box feel more valuable and more luxury would to be just include multiples of the items that are in it. Like I don't think actually a lot of the items are that problematic, but I do think including two of the oatmeals would have been nice. Including two of all the beverages would have been nice. So you arguably could share them with a friend. You could, you know, have it to try twice. I don't know. I just feel like that would have added easy value. And again, I'm <laughs> this drinking dog and co candle, like just include the candle, just include it. Especially as an eight ounce candle, it would have fit in this box and been able to ship, especially if they had packed it well, like with, you know, worms and, and done all the right things. Yeah. So I think upon more reflection, because I have taken a lot of time to think about it, I think we're past the point of refunds for sure, but I think what would be really positive at this point in time is for the Daily Hive to come out and to apologize to their consumers and to the small businesses they partnered with. I really think that's super important and that's the step forward that needs to take place. On top of that, I think an explanation of what happened in a way that is non-blaming and taking responsibility, because no matter what, if a brand dropped out or someone, and this again goes back to their lack of PR expertise. I saw the, the they had wrote companies we had been expecting bigger items from gave us smaller items which is frustrating or something like the leaders of the subscription box you're organizing it this is your brand this is your name take responsibility for it give us an explanation how your leadership failed and how you're going to improve especially if you're going to come forward with a future box i think at this point in time daily hive should not be coming out with any other boxes you know until this is resolved this idea of getting feedback is ridiculous you knew the box wasn't well received and i can send you this video and show you that the box hasn't been well received please take take some notes kind of was a bit of a scam in some ways like i definitely think it cheapened the idea of what a vancouver city box could have been and i also think it really missed some important cues on what a subscription box actually is i know that subscription boxes are sometimes filled with items from big companies and big names and maybe they're not always the best item or the in-season item or they're from a season before but I mean, I don't want to just be sold an ad straight up in my box. 
You get my vibe? Came to get this box because I wanted to feel excited opening it. And I definitely haven't walked away from this box feeling excited or happy. I actually do feel a little bit like ripped off and I haven't even officially looked up what the cost of everything is yet. Am I being harsh? <laughs> you guys let me know. What was your expectation for a Vancouver City box? What would you expect to get in it? Are these the items that you would have been happy to receive? Am I just being a little too brutal? My whole point on my channel is I pay for these boxes myself. I don't live on influencer culture. I don't draw from the perks of having a YouTube channel. Often brands don't even appreciate my reviews because they're not for the brands. They're for you guys as consumers. And as a consumer myself, I feel disappointed by this box. I think the Hive should definitely, they're gonna repeat this box or redo a Vancouver City box. They should actually touch base with a subscription box company, learn how to kind of put it together cohesively. And two, if they're gonna be deriving a lot of the costs from experiences, I think they need to be taking that into account when promising a retail value to customers. I would have liked to have them seen them do like, oh, this is the retail value of the goods included. And just anything that's an experience is considered a bonus because at the end of the day, people from, not from BC are going to be ordering the box. Let me know what you guys think. As usual, uh, tell me your honest truth too, because you know, I'm being honest with you. I, I don't think I would ever repurchase this box. And to know that the first one was filled with lots of good items and the second one's kind of just chintzy or like not enough items that it kind of comes off as sample to me. Yeah. Let me know what you guys think. Let my voice is dying. So I've just been talking for two hours. Thank you as usual for watching. I appreciate your time. Be well, do well, stay well, and we will talk to you very soon. Bye.